I am Tim. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It is in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any of our platforms. Please reach out to me directly, email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing a model that was originally launched in 2002 as part of a Jaeger LeCoultre boutique exclusive series of white gold ruthenium dial master series watches. So this is the Jaeger LeCoultre Master Geographic using an emblematic complication that the brand first launched in 1989. It blends the world time genre with the dual time genre, having elements of both. So the watch is 38 millimeters in diameter in gray gold, which is a white gold 18 karat alloy that never needs to be plated. It measures a reasonable 11.9 millimeters thick and from lug tip to lug tip, 46.1 millimeters with a 19 millimeter spacing between the lugs. On my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, this watch wears beautifully. Taking a look down the barrel, the lugs can be observed nowhere near the edge of my wrist. So I believe even if your wrist is 14 centimeters circumference, you're going to wear this really well. Taking a look at the cuff shot, you can see it's flat and its bezel is sloped, so it'll slide easily under a dress cuff. This angle always exaggerates the width of a watch, so don't take it as gospel. It's an approximation. I am pulling the strap tight and compressing my wrist a bit. The important angle is this one, where you can see the the lugs are nowhere near the edge of my wrist. Again, 14 centimeter circumference wrists and up. Here we have large rectangular scale alligator leather in a sort of semi-gloss brownish red with sheer cut sides, a monotone stitch on the bottom, calfskin. This is a brand new Jaeger LeCoultre factory strap. No crimping, no gouging. And the case itself, exactly the same gray gold as used on the clasp. Clasp features both polish externally and media blasting internally. And again, that gray gold terminology, that is an 18 karat white gold that never needs rhodium plating. So it's the same color all the way through. We have a number of different crowns and pushers. This one's used for setting the watch. This one's used for setting the date. This one is used for setting the geographic city of reference. Now the dial is ruthenium coated, which gives it a nice soft glow in the light. We have contrasting sub registers in silver and a small amount of blue and red. So this is a surprising amount of color here. You can see that the Reho outboard is a large stepped ring with an aperture down at the bottom for the reference city. And then we have applied JLC logo and faceted dart style indices. We also have half frosted Dauphine hands at the center with the half frosting making it easier to read them via greater contrast. There is a small amount of loom, not a lot, but it's there. Now let's talk about how these complications work. The first thing is that the watch is automatic, but if you wish, you can wind it manually and watch that power reserve indicator move toward 40. 40 hours is the maximum rated power reserve of this watch. Now let's talk about that reference city. So right now, I'm going to move everything in sync. You could see that it's 2 a.m. in the morning in New York. And you know that because I've set the time at center, which is your local time, to match the reference time, which is the time you're monitoring remotely, the place where you are not. So what I've done is I've set New York as the reference time. And I'm in New York because these two are identical. And you can see that it's nighttime because little AM PM aperture is blue. It's dark blue. It'll turn a lighter color as the daylight dawns. So let's make that journey from night into day. And you can see how blue becomes silver white. Okay, now let's talk about setting that reference time separately from, well, before we do that, let's demonstrate how the geographic system works. So let's say I want to change my reference city to Honolulu. Notice that the second time zone adjusts automatically. It does the math for you and it is bi-directionally adjustable. I also have the ability to activate hacking or stop seconds. That will halt the seconds hand and allow you to synchronize to a reference time. One click out allows you to change the reference time zone and actually decouple it from the center hands as well as the reference ring. So that's how that works. You have the ability to set that independently. Now underneath the case back, we have the movement, but the case back is part of the theater. We have the master control individual numbering attesting that this watch as a fully cased up product has survived durability testing, water resistance testing, winding efficiency, power reserve, and chronometric testing. And I believe that for the standard master control series, the tolerance at the time 
time was minus one second plus six, so a little bit better actually than the COSC, which is minus four plus six. And this is a 41-day test, 1,000 hours, whereas the COSC is about two weeks. So this watch ran the gauntlet of the master control and it earned that number. 50 meters water resistant, still not a watch you wanna take swimming, but surprising for a dress watch, they tend to be 20 to 30. Now, the best thing about a Hunter case back is that you get the solid gold case back, but you also get the display case back. Engine turning internally. Note the JLC maker's mark on the case, so they're making their own cases at this point. The movement is based on the 889, but it features the geographic world time, dual time complication module. So the base is essentially a JLC 889, which is a thin, fine, and largely handcrafted automatic movement, often paired with complications. So you can see we have a bi-directional winding rotor. The mass here is 22 karat gold. Later on, JLC would reduce the carat count of the gold mass and even use tungsten but there were no compromises at this point. We have polished pin heads locating the various bridges, and then the screws were all fired blue. We have circular Cote de Genève on the bridges. We have engine turning on the base plate. You could see the jeweled reversing rocker that's characteristic of these bi-directional winding JLC movements. We, are, we have a Triovis micro-adjustment mechanism for fine-tuning of the timing. And in the past, 889 calibers have proved to be capable of chronometer certification. So this is a very fine, high-end, accurate movement when properly tuned and serviced. You could see how the hacking second works on the 4 hertz beat rate. And again, all of this with a power reserve of 40 hours. A good-looking movement, and something else worth mentioning that you don't see on JLC movements anymore, certainly not on their mass-produced movements, this 38-joule movement is adjusted in six positions, which is one more than the chronometer standard, and one more than you'll get at a lot of high-end brands like Vacheron and Longa today. So this watch is absolutely stacked, a window to a bygone era of grace and ambition in JLC watchmaking. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.